been following you for a while. You know, after your roles in Boogie Nights in Chicago, Gangs of New York, The Hours, Magnolia, Heart 8, in 2006 when we profiled you. The headline was, one of these days, this is after all those films, one of these days, audiences may remember John C. Riley's name. <laughs> Look, it's no guarantee. Show business is a fickle business. <laughs> How many times have you watched those old classic movies that you love, or you love everyone in it, and then it's like the Humphrey Bogart, yeah? No, 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 I don't know any of these people. But you know, in the, back in the day when they did that movie with Humphrey Bogart, they're like, I got the Bogart film, we're gonna be, it's gonna be huge, it's gonna, I'm gonna become immortal in film as a result. And it's, uh, it's the sands of time, they slip away. So I think, as far as I'm concerned, I'd be happy to be forgotten if the roles are still watched. Yeah, people are always asking the character actor, don't you wanna become famous? Don't you wanna be a marquee star? I think the best answer I've ever come up with that, for that inquiry is, Every person in the whole world is the star of their life story. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when you play a supporting character, it's not like you're thinking, oh, I'm just a small part of this life. You know, you're looking through the, through the lens of your own experience, no matter what character you're playing. So it's just as hard to do a leading role as it is to do a, a supporting role, I think. You still have to do all that work it takes to... Mm -hmm. In fact, in some ways, leading roles are easier because you have more time to kind of get into the slipstream and you can build something over, over the course of a production. Like Supporting actors are often like the special forces, you know, we fly in in a, <laughs> in a frenzy and hit the ground, we have to like nail it in three days and then, and then get out. John does have three films here at Canada and there are three ambitious films that are, you know, odd and strange and interesting. Uh, Tale of Tales, Cowboys and The Lobster. Um, all three of which seem to be films that people are really talking about. What, what does it feel like to be a kid who grew up in the south side of Chicago, started in a theater scene there in Chicago, and ends up at Cannes with three films? I mean, does it sometimes still catch you that this is a surreal It's preposterous. <laughs> like, I, didn't even, I didn't even really think I could be an actor. Like, it was something that I did from a really young age, like at probably eight years old, I started doing plays. But I didn't know anyone in my life who was an actor for a living. Like no one, not even like the aunt of an uncle of a nephew, like nobody. Yeah. So I just kept thinking like, well, I'm gonna have to f figure out like what job I'm gonna have. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. I'll keep doing plays because this is fun. And then uh, sometime right at the end of college actually, a friend of mine, Kevin G. O'Connor, who's from my same neighborhood in Chicago, uh, got, offered a part in this movie, Peggy Sue Got Married, the Francis Coppola movie. Yeah. And now suddenly, just this light bulb went off like, oh, you could do that for a living. Then I don't have to pick <laughs> a job. Then I can be whatever job I have to be for the part. Do you think of yourself as a Chicago actor? Oh, it? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's, I didn't leave Chicago until I was 22 years old, yeah. literally. So <laughs> every time I meet someone, no matter where I am in the world, they say, where are you from? And I say, I'm from Chicago but I live in Los Angeles. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, Chicago is, I think, the greatest American city. You know, is that Carl Sandburg poem, that uh, Chicago hog butcher to the world, city of big shoulders, all that? The second half of that poem, I forgot, I just read it again recently, the second half of that poem was like all about laughter. The whole uh, thing is about laughter, giant, hearty laughter, like, and that's probably the most important component of Chicago is that the ultimate sin is pretension. Mm -hmm. That's the worst thing you can do in Chicago. You can be crass and you can be whatever, drunk and disorderly, but if you're pretentious, that's like, get out, you know? Yeah. You, you talk about resisting pretension, and I was thinking about how here films like Tale of Tales that are so wild and The Lobster that has such an elaborate premise are received in a particular way, this being sort of the palace of cinema it can. Whereas um, it, some of the surrealism and the absurdism isn't that different from what you might be doing with Tim and Eric late night on uh, Adult right. Swim, yeah. you know? Do you, um, that blurring of like highbrow and lowbrow and what's experimental and what's just comedy. I look for that... the same qualities and stuff across the board, whether it's a play or a movie or any yeah. kind of project. I look, you know, I like things that are subversive. I like things that are absurd. I like stuff that is a combination of things where something will make you very, very sad and then suddenly you just burst out laughing at how pathetic it is, you know, like, mm -hmm. and I think, 
I think definitely the lobster and tail of tails dip traffic in that world, and that was probably why I was. Well, tail of tails. Let's face it. They said, "Do you want to play a king in Sicily for two weeks?" I was, like, "Yeah." I'll do it. <laughs> so that was a real no-brainer, and so was the lobster actually because of Yorgos Lanthimos's previous work. It was just so amazing. Dog Tooth is, yeah, I think, one of the, the classics of our time. So, you know, like I've done a lot. I've done almost seventy yeah. movies at this point. I've I've done. Big comedies and action movies and space movies and all, you know, yeah. all this different stuff. That at this point, I'm just looking for stuff that's fun and inspiring and engaging and and something that feels like an adventure. And coming to Europe, unless it's a really bad movie, like you're gonna have a great adventure in Europe, right. one way or the other. So I was like, oh man, this is this yeah. is the life for me. I want to be... <laughs> How do I become a French film star without speaking French? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you find that when you're moving between, you know, you're on a Marvel movie set for Guardians of the Galaxy, you're on a low-budget film set for an art film, do you approach the work differently or are you kind of in the same place no matter what the environment is? Yeah, it's the same, same job, whether yeah. it's a comedy or a drama or whatever. You're still... You have to connect with the director of film as a a director's medium, you know, I, I'm of the opinion that actors should be like good soldiers, you know, you're mm -hmm. loyal, prompt, <laughs> dedicated, <laughs> and trying to like follow orders, you know. Right. But Over the years it seems like you've done more and more projects that have been either more experimental or absurdist. Do you think that's because it's that those possibilities have been there or do you think your sensibilities kind of change? Well, if I looked another way, let's face it, I would probably be doing more conventional things, <laughs> but when you are me, like, <laughs> absurd works, you know, like, uh -huh. subversive works, I don't know. Yeah. I think if you stand by what you believe in and you, you have some kind of integrity about your choices, it's a reflection of, of who you are, I guess. Mm -hmm. So many people get stuck on a, on a particular track, you know, get typecast, yeah. and you're like the ultimate example of not, not being typecast, you know, you, you move between so many different yeah, things. Yeah, hard to, hard to pin down. How are you able to pull that off when on so many other you people You just have it? to know when to say no, and yeah. sometimes it's really, really hard and very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to, you have to, I mean, I can't say I have a perfect batting record, you know, there's plenty of things that I wish had turned out better than they did, but mm -hmm. for the most, I mean, with, I don't think any exceptions, I've, I've chosen the path that I wanted to, to go down. This is your six can here. This is such a bizarre place. Do you have a particularly odd memory of being here in Cam? What's your, your strangest, strangest night here? I came here with here? Paul Thomas Anderson the first time with his movie Hard Eight, and we were just these young idiots, didn't know what we were doing, <laughs> running around Can, hustling for canapes. <laughs> and I remember being in some weird restaurant that had a lot of French people in it. I think we were the only Americans in there, and they were like, now nah, we're going to have karaoke. Like in the middle of this restaurant, like, all right. And this little stage at the end of this restaurant, they started doing karaoke, and I was like, I'm doing Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> and I got up and did Eye of the Tiger with karate moves, and I was kicking over the mic stand and freaking the French karaoke guy out. Like, no, oh, monsieur, monsieur, please, please. <laughs> but that was a highlight. <laughs> 